Welcome back to Collective Perspective, episode 34. It's going to be very hard to top that exciting episode that 33 was. He's still in shock. <laughs> yeah, we just spent 20 more minutes talking about it between recordings here. <laughs> so what friends are for. Uh, today we're going to talk about condition. And my first and main question here for you, Craig, is does condition matter to you when you're collecting video games? Um, I have a feeling my answer is going to be the same as yours, and that is, it depends. So, right. uh, I have different thresholds for, uh, what I consider acceptable and not acceptable. Uh, like, for example, if it's a DVD case kind of game, uh, anything from, like, uh, from, you know, GameCube, PS2, Xbox onward, uh, it has to be in pretty decent shape. I feel like there's not really an excuse for those games to be beat up, because they're kind of meant to be last meant to last and be on a shelf uh and then once you get the jewel cases uh i don't mind a cracker two here or there but uh as long as like it's not like completely scuffed up like if you take it to the light and do this if you could still see the cover art i'll consider it acceptable and then with uh cardboard and stuff like that i feel like sometimes you just gotta take what you can get uh for me it more just depends on the price of the item uh with cardboard stuff like if it's a good deal and it's a little rough then I'll probably take it. If it's uh, a little bit of a higher price, but it's in pristine condition, I'll probably pay up a little bit if it's something I care about. I think to, my issue is that I want everything. And when you want everything, you can't have <laughs> everything in a 9.8A++, yeah. plus plus, you know? Yeah, you, you can't be picky. And, and because of that, um, in a sense, it's almost like I'm collecting quantity over quality in that regard. Um, even though I am picking up lots of quality games, um, just, I don't know if that makes sense in my head. Does that make sense? No, you're, you're, you're a, you're a, qual you're a quantity over quality guy in general. Don't lie. <laughs> you just want it all. A lot of times <laughs> it's just checking a box for me, you know? And so like these game, Game Boy Advance games, it's like, this is uncommon. It doesn't pop up a lot. If I can get it for, you know, $20 cheaper then heck yeah, I'm going to pick it up if it's in a little bit worse condition. But where do you draw the line? Like, how bad is too bad for you? Or do you not really have a limit? I have this embarrassing pickup from, like, a year or two ago. Go get it I, right now. It's right behind you. Just I should do it. totally grab it. It's so bad. Um, Go it's... do it. It's worth it, I'm sure. Is it a first-party title? Not first-party. Hold on. Let it be, like, Lizzie McGuire or something that has no excuse being terrible condition. It has no excuse being terrible. It's a double pack. <laughs> um... <laughs> it is something I, okay it might have been in a lot no i can't even i can't even like <laughs> You're trying to defend yourself. I, <laughs> I bought this by itself i think i was the only bidder rightfully so this is so bad um and it was like a dollar with like five dollars shipping or something okay this is six dollars i'm never getting back oh it's scooby-doo it. combo pack um let me take it oh out of the God. box so y'all can really see what's going on here looks like there's juices on the front of it <laughs> oh my God. it's got it, it's got a full hole in it okay oh like someone just couldn't wait to get to the game i don't know they <laughs> tore right through through that thing god uh, that is incredible and there's a slash through it it's uh why do i own this and why is it in a box protector what am i protecting it from <laughs> it's not gonna get much worse <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um I love okay it. so that's extreme end of the spectrum i don't do that I, I that's a one off thing for me all right i saw it for a dollar i was like why not um now so okay, here's so, here's where i have kind of embarrassing qualm to my collecting so that kind of thing actually wouldn't bother me too much because uh one thing that i admit is totally silly of me is I care more about the quality and the condition of the spine of a game than anything else, because that's what I'm going to be looking at most often. You put it on the shelf, you look at the spine. So if yeah. there's a hole in the front cover, I'd rather it there, honestly, than the spine. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Um, yeah, so, like, when it comes to important titles, you know, I spent a lot of money on Super Metroid or Super Mario World. I spent a lot of money on big games that are complete in box, and... Um, those games, I'm definitely getting, you know, I'm sensitive about the condition for those. 
And even then, like, I'm not going for, like, top-of-the-line, pristine, best thing you've ever seen. But I do want it to be, you know, an 8 out of 10, perhaps. Um, and then, this isn't condition, but I do want all the inserts when I'm buying this crap. Because I don't want to have to track it down later. You're not, you, you aren't okay with just game box manual? You want all the for, inserts, too? For so long, I was just game box and manual. And now I don't want to do it anymore. For anything you want all board. or nothing yeah all or nothing um yeah so like another thing i recently bought like I, I think i'm shifting more um recently i got a really good price on this castlevania on nes and it's the freaking circle seal that i wanted and everything but it's like missing a tab and it's just like why did i do that you know i feel like i'm learning and i'm i'm not i'm taking less I don't, what am I trying to say? I'm not. I'm settling for. I'm not settling as much as I, I used to. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you should because, or you shouldn't settle because you're. You. I mean, you're spending good money on these games. You know, a lot. A lot of these games that we want and care about aren't. You know, five, ten, twenty dollars. You know, sometimes they're fifty, yeah. sixty, seventy, eighty, a hundred dollars. So I mean, you want to be. You want to feel like you're getting what you pay for. If that sounds right to you, you know. Like you, you don't want to put down. I don't know how how much does Castlevania go for? I'd say probably like a hundred bucks complete in box on average, maybe more. Yeah, definitely I guess more. It depends on the version, but like you know, even if you're paying, you know, let's say price charting equivalent, you don't want to get on the bottom end of that. I know, you know, it's like you might go to a game store and they might price it based off of price charting, but then you got to consider that that's the average of the high end and the low end quality of those games as well. So. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I definitely think that uh, it's good to be picky with condition, but sometimes you kind of just have to get what you get to, especially if you're going for harder to find stuff or like how you like very hard to find uncommon Game Boy Advance games. Sometimes it's like, oh, you either get the the so-so condition one or you don't get it for another 20 years when another one goes for sale again, <laughs> you know? So. Yeah, absolutely. I'm thinking I should put this freaking Scooby as the thumbnail. <laughs> that would be that'd be a fun one. How do you feel about condition? <laughs> no, yeah, and I, I I am very weird, and it is true that I mostly I care more about the spine than the front of the back of a game. Uh, I mean, I, I know everyone displays their games differently, and I guess it depends on space and everything else. Like I know sometimes if you have a shelf, if you're trying to uh, fill up the space to make it look nice, you might have games on the front. But ninety percent of the time, especially like you and me. We just got too much garbage, so it's like we kind of had to put stuff on their spine <laughs> to make it yeah. all fit. <laughs> and I think, you know, that's the part that you're going to see the most, so I think you just want that to look really good. Uh, of course, you don't want a big old hole in the front of your game like some people's Game Boy Advance games, but uh, I think it's uh, it's better to have it... I mean, we're buying these games mostly as display pieces, let's be real. <laughs> so We could play yeah. all these games on emulators if we wanted to. We're buying them because we want to have them look pretty on a shelf. Um, so what else was I going to talk about? We have, oh, Game Gear I wanted to bring up specifically. It's like, I will never be picky about Game Gear. If I can find no, the box, I, can, I consider that a win. <laughs> yeah, it's it's whatever you find on eBay or nothing. You don't really have much options yeah. there. So Plus, one thing about a lot of these old cardboard games is once you put them in a box protector, they pretty much look all right anyway. So even if you have a pretty roughed up box, you put in a box protector... Looks brand spanking new. So now I can't uh, stand seeing the GameStop stickers on the spine of a of a DVD case game. It's pretty freaking mm -hmm. annoying. Um, and I can't be bothered. I can be bothered if I have to 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 rip that thing off, get the rubbing alcohol, whatever it takes. It's the worst. Yes, um, it sucks. It's now way with too GameCube, much work. With GameCube, when you're going for a set for something, you just take the bottom of the barrel. It's complete. It works. Okay, give me that crap. I'll sit here scraping that crap off for 10, 20 minutes. <laughs> um, but yeah, for the most part, like if I'm buying PS2 games or something, I don't want any stickers on the spine. It's just the worst. Yeah. If it's on the if it's on the outside of the spine, most of the time I'll settle and take the time. But uh, if it's on the artwork, that's when I, I usually am like, nah, it's just, just too much work and too stressful. It's so stressful taking stickers off of actual artwork. Yeah. There's been so many times where I thought I was going to ruin a game. And I remember specifically, 
uh, when I was going for the GameCube set the first time. Uh, when I finally got Zoids, which was one of the hardest games for me to find, one of the last like 20 games I got, the artwork was on the spine, and I remember spending like 30 minutes just slowly peeling it off because I was so <laughs> so afraid of ruining the the artwork. And luckily, no damage was done. So, but that's still half an hour of my life I'll never get back. <laughs> um, if we were sealed and graded games collectors, this would be a different conversation for sure. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're buying anything sealed, then you should definitely, definitely, definitely care about condition. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to be paying a lot no matter what. So you don't want to buy a sealed game that's all scuffed up or has any rips or anything like that. Then it's really not even worth it, in my opinion. I don't know. Anything else to add here? I was just curious. If you were to send all of your games to Wada, what would the average grade be? You think if you had to take a guess? <laughs> Not good, Craig. <laughs> you think it'd be on the lower end? I mean, are we just talking cardboard here? No, everything. If you were to if you were to take all of your games to water right now and have everyone graded, what do you think the average grade would be? The average would be pretty good because most of my games are in uh, DVD cases. There you go. What would you say, like seven or higher? Yeah, I'd say seven. Pro- probably the same for me, too. I think it helps that I don't have much cardboard right now, so I mostly right. have DVD cases and stuff as well. But, uh, cause like when I had Super Mario RPG, uh, that was pretty rough, but I got a good deal on it. And that's the thing. Sometimes it's just, I, I may care more or less about condition depending on how good of a deal it is. So, I think I have about 350 to 400 pieces of cardboard. Out of like 2,100 games. So that's a pretty good percentage, actually. Hmm. Maybe a 6.5 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, let's be real. <laughs> I like how you brought up the jewel cases, though, because I think a lot of people will lose their mind if they have cracks. And I can't see yourself, I can't see myself avoiding cracks in a PS1 game. Oh. Um, also, you could literally just switch out the DVD case, or the, yeah. the CD case. I mean, I know some people care, but it's. At the end of the day, it's just a, a a clear CD case. I mean, it's not really much different. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy for thinking that, but that doesn't bother me at all personally. Yeah. On uh, Saturn yeah. cases, it sucks a little bit more because those are harder to replace. But Yeah, you got to make sure people ship them things in boxes for sure. Yes, I've gotten, I've gotten some Saturn games in bubble mailers, and I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like the it's like the hinge on that game wasn't broken on the eBay photo, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's just how the hobby goes sometimes. I can't believe I showed my Scooby on the freaking collective perspective uh, here. Exposed fake collector. Not only a, is he a shelf collector, he doesn't care about condition. You know what I don't have? Moldy games in my collection. I see there a lot of moldy listings on eBay. That's scary. That's really scary. <laughs> Um, have you ever had a moldy game or have you ever found a moldy game in your collection? No, not that I know of. Me neither. If I did, I probably would have just gotten rid of everything. I'd be like, time to start from square one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> can't trust nothing. I have had games that have uh water damage and when you get something water damage, like I got this big lot on offer up, actually my cousin got it and uh fire emblem path of radiance was in there. It didn't have a manual. There was another big GameCube game. I think it was it was another high dollar GameCube game and um the manual was rock solid and I can't live like that. Have you seen water damage manuals get like rock solid and crusty? Yes, where it feels like you're they're going to like tear apart when you try to flip the page. <laughs> yeah, those are those are a no for me. Yes, those are scary. All right guys, thank but yeah, you for uh that's about it. Checking out episode 34 here. Yes, let us know what you think about the conditions of your games. Let us know how much of a fraud Christian is for his Scooby-Doo. Make sure to join the Discord for the love of God. Come hang out in the Discord. Yes, please. You can make fun of him there. It'll be a good time. 